Medicine for Humanity is a nonprofit organization aimed at improving health care in the world for women. Eritrea is one of the newest and most promising nations in Africa. Situated on the Red Sea between Ethiopia and the Sudan, it is a rich heritage dating back to 1000 BC. Having been ruled by almost 10 countries, each left a lasting impression. None as significant, however, as the Italians. From architecture to agriculture to transportation, Italy transformed this East African country. And by the 1930s, Eritrea was one of the most highly industrialized colonies in Africa. Rome's influence could still be seen throughout the country. And so can Ethiopia's. Right when Eritreans were settling into their newfound identity, the country was taken over by Ethiopia. In 1960, after 10 years of oppressive rule, Eritreans stood up and began their struggle for independence. A struggle lasting 30 years, claiming over 60,000 lives. It was the longest African war of the 20th century. Scars from their struggle for freedom pepper the landscape. A rusting tank outside a bustling village is a reminder of not only the cost, but more important, the country's victorious triumph. As weeds grow over the past, Eritreans look forward to a future of hope and prosperity. We chose Eritrea because of this. It is a country brimming with potential. Friendly people and helpful officials greeted us with an open mind and hopeful heart. We knew we were in the right place. We think of Eritrea because it has manageable problems, it has things that can be fixed, and it has manageable population. Today, how do you feel? It can be visibly and palpably helped in our lifetime. And here to help is Medicine for Humanity's caring team of enthusiastic medical professionals. Her vital signs after surgery. Dr. Clifford Wheelis, professor at Johns Hopkins, has devoted his time and experience to medical missions in over 42 countries. Dr. Gautam Chaudhry, chairman of obstetrics and gynecology at the UCLA Medical Center. What's the longest time it took to deliver one of your first five children? Dr. Sherry Thomas is a highly qualified surgeon specializing in the repair of injuries to the bladder and other pelvic organs. So just a little bit of partial. Partial, yes. Dr. Jill Satori joined the mission during her residency in obstetrics and gynecology at UCLA. It was her deep desire to make a difference, not only within the hospital, but around the world. It looks benign. And co-founder and medical director of Medicine for Humanity, Professor Emeritus of Obstetrics and Gynecology at UCLA, Dr. Leo Lagasse. We have found that the health of women is directly related to the health of the nation. They're the doers of, of, of families, of communities. So if they're not healthy, then families cannot prosper. For five days in January 2004, the team went to work at the maternity hospital in the capital city of Asmara. Women from all over the region came hoping to be treated. So the doctors scrubbed in, gloved up, and got to work. We have a, uh, a patient with, a, with a, a large ovarian tumor that's going to be removed. She's 47 years old, but, uh, but her nutrition is kind of poor, and so we're a little concerned that she can get through the surgery really well. The present time, this mass is about the size of an American uh, small watermelon, and it is from a carcinoma of her ovary. If she has any chance to survive, we must remove all of this tumor because there's no uh, formal chemotherapy in this country, and surgery is only is the main uh, chance that she has to live. If we weren't here, I think they probably wouldn't operate on her. It's just way too extensive, and she probably would have died uh, pretty shortly after. Time. It, it feels good to know that we we're giving her some hope, and some hope that possibly she can overcome her cancer and um, live longer and see more. It was a procedure that lasted six hours in an operating room surrounded by windows and an air conditioner powered by a piece of cardboard. 
The team constantly fought back fatigue and dehydration. At one point, Dr. Thomas had to get creative and administer her own IV. Shortly after, Sherry was dubbed Eritrea's MacGyver. I'm ready. Actually, it's, it's fairly challenging, and it's, the, the whole team realizes that it is. We have to stay pretty alert because they have such limited equipment. It's not the knowledge that's limited, it's their, it's their infrastructure. With only seven doctors on staff, the maternity hospital sees about 1,700 patients a month. In addition to delivering babies, doctors here treat problems arising from complications with labor. Prolonged labor, which is common here, can cause a fistula or tear in the bladder to develop, causing the bladder to leak. The hospital's medical director, Dr. Azrat, believes the main problem is lack of awareness. When labor starts, they stay at home, okay? They say, the, uh, the neighbors, the husband, the mother, uh, they say, you're going to deliver, just wait a little, wait. If the delivery goes uneventfully, as most of them do, uh, that would be okay. But what we're uh, faced with is the complications of labor and delivery, and when that happens, it's a uh, disaster. And then after they decide to go to the facility, the question of transportation and the distance comes. For example, if uh, one lady is coming from a village, the village where she, she lives might not have uh, an access to a car or an ambulance. And then she had to, to, to walk on foot to reach to the place where there is a transportation. Okay? And then when she gets the transportation, the, the, the bus or the car may not take her to this place. They might stay in labor, fully dilated, fully effaced, for seven, eight days. So you're saying that she was in labor four days at home in her small village, and then it took her 24 hours to get to Karin, and then another four hours to get from Karin to here. Yes. And then when she got here, I'm so sorry to hear, I understand her baby had already Did. died. Yes. It was, yeah, from all of her pushing. Yeah. And then they had to do a cesarean section. They removed her uterus. And then right after that, that's when she just started leaking. The woman, because of much more prolonged labor and perhaps lack of as much facilities as they would require, they tend to develop big fistulas, you know, from the vagina. There's a connection between the vagina and the bladder, which then allows urine to flow through also the vagina. This makes the patient very uncomfortable. The problem with a fistula woman is that she's a social outcast. Usually, uh, not always, the husband divorces her, the family either makes a little shack in the back of their house for her to live in because her odor is so offensive that no one will get around her. Many of them are asked to leave the village and they wander up and down the rural roads of Ethiopia, Eritrea. These little uh, girls are giving off this odor. Uh, it's not unusual for them to be attacked by the hyena or the wild dogs. The lucky ones who can survive and get to a maternity center for the early fistulas, they can be treated by the local surgeons. They have difficulty with the more advanced fistulas. I'd say we got the peritoneum pretty well. Our ability in managing or repairing fistulas is limited. Uh, we cannot treat them, so we need to have uh, some expertise to, to, to help us manage these patients. Well, the doctors uh, seem to be very well educated. There's just not enough of them. Since 1960, uh, there was no medical school or any other higher uh, institution, especially in the medical field. Dr. Michael Hewitt has worked for the Ministry of Health since Eritrea's independence in 1991. Thirteen years later, he's on the verge of celebrating another milestone for Eritrean independence. What we have here is the uh, laboratory for physiology and uh, biochemistry classes.
school, the medical school, and other institutions of higher learning were shut down. Dr. Hewitt is heading up this important project. In the long years uh, since uh, the occupation of the, the Ethiopians, we have always wanted to have uh, an establishment of our own and train our own uh, doctors and other health professionals, and this is like a dream come true. In a country where there's one doctor for every 16,000 people, it's a dream that will save lives. Well, this new facility is one of the four or six regional hospitals we are building. In. Saul Meki is the Minister of Health for Eritrea. He took us on a tour of one of his new hospitals, all part of an effort to catch up with 50 years of neglect. The country as a whole is investing in an incredible amount of money in area resources in public health. This new facility in the south of the country is desperately needed. This area is supposed to serve 780,000 people. The pressure of health care here is, is very high. You have highly concentrated people more than any other part of the country. You have many maternal and child problems, injuries. Hopefully this would be at the center of research. It will provide a curative center. This, of course, will decentralize public health, brings the service closer to the people, and, of course, easier and better to manage uh, overall. So one hopes that eventually we will be helping others and not seeking help forever. But to get there, we need the assistance, the, 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 the humanitarian interest and commitment of everybody to be part of this, of, this, of this growing process. We have a lot of hope that Eritrea would be able to take care of its people and it would be an example for others to follow. We'd like for her to get up and sit in a chair. I hope, I hope. I hope, yeah, I hope. you'll be fine. We feel very happy when doctors come from somewhere to, to share their experience with us. When they come to, to, to this place, they are of great help to us, to our patients primarily, to the ministry and to the nation as a whole. One patient's life in particular was touched. Remember the young girl who was in labor for five days? Yeah. You have another retractor like this. Uh, How about this one? The team successfully repaired her fistula which was caused by all her pushing during labor, and she's expected to make a full recovery. This is why we went into medicine. Was she up today? I'm okay. When a local patient looks up and says thank you in a way that you can't express because you know and they know they wouldn't have that service if the people weren't there, it's a very special moment, very emotional moment. It's a moment you don't forget.